Hello viewers, in today's class we are going to discuss one important definite integral uh, which will be solved using the concept of differentiation under the integral sign, right? So here uh, we have to uh, prove that the value of this integral that is 0 to infinity cos alpha x minus cos beta x and divided by x dx is equal to a log of beta over alpha, right? So uh, we'll solve this integral uh, with the help of uh, the concept of differentiating an integral uh, with respect to uh, some variable, right? So let us start and let us first take uh, this integral as i, right? So we have i is equal to 0 to infinity cos alpha x minus cos of beta x uh, divided by x, right? So, uh, when we uh, use the concept of differentiation under the integral sign, uh, what we usually do, we differentiate uh, the integral uh, with respect to some variable, right? And here, in the integrand, we see that uh, we have uh, three variables, alpha, beta and x, right? So, here, uh, we'll uh, select alpha as our variable, right? So here I will differentiate i with respect to alpha uh, treating x and beta as constant, right? So what we will do, I will differentiate i with respect to alpha taking x and beta as constant, right? So in other words, we can say that I will partially differentiate i with respect to alpha, right? So we can now write di over uh, d alpha is equal to 0 to infinity and here we have d by d alpha of cos alpha x minus cos of beta x uh, divided by x and here we have dx, right? So now uh, we will have here di over d alpha is equal to 0 to infinity and uh, see uh, here uh, x is a constant uh, because we are partially differentiating this expression with respect to alpha right so uh, the derivative of cos alpha x is minus sine alpha x and then the derivative of alpha x uh, with respect to alpha by chain rule is the simply x right and the derivative of cos beta x is zero because here uh, cos beta x does not contain any uh, term containing alpha right so here we have zero and in the denominator we will have x right okay so now we have uh, zero to infinity and we have minus x sine alpha x divided by x dx and this x and this x get cancelled. So we are left with 0 to infinity minus sine alpha x dx, right? So now we have obtained this expression uh, that is di over d alpha is equal to 0 to infinity minus sine alpha x dx right so now to move further uh, what we will do uh, see here we have to integrate the minus sine alpha x from 0 to infinity right so what we will do uh, will here make use of the Euler's uh, formula right see Euler's formula says that e raised to uh, i theta is equal to uh, cos of theta plus i sine theta right so if we uh, replace uh, this theta uh, by uh, minus uh, alpha x then uh, we'll have e raised to i times minus alpha x is equal to cos of minus alpha x and here we'll have i sine uh, minus of alpha x right so now this is e raised to minus i alpha x and here 
cos of minus alpha x is simply cos of alpha x and here uh, we'll have minus i sine alpha x right so here uh, we have used the result from trigonometry that uh, that is cos of uh, uh, say minus theta is equal to cos of theta and the sine of minus theta is minus of sine theta right so now uh, from this expression uh, we see that uh, this uh, uh, sine alpha x or minus sine alpha x uh, can be written as uh, the imaginary part of imaginary part of e raised to uh, minus i alpha x right so here uh, what we have done uh, we have used uh, some concept from uh, complex analysis so here e raised to minus i alpha x is cos alpha x minus i sine alpha x right so e raised to uh, minus i alpha x can be written as uh, cos of alpha x plus i times minus uh, sine of alpha x right so minus sine alpha x minus sine alpha x is the imaginary part of e raised to minus i alpha x right so now uh, here uh, we can now write 0 to infinity and minus sine uh, alpha x can be written as imaginary uh, part of e raised to minus i alpha x right so now we have this expression right so di over d alpha is equal to integral from 0 to infinity imaginary part of e raised to minus i alpha x right so now we can write imaginary part of 0 to infinity and here we have e raised to minus i uh, alpha x uh, dx right so now we have uh, this integral right so now uh, we can easily uh, solve this integral so the integral of e raised to minus i alpha x is uh, 1 over minus i alpha and e raised to minus i alpha x and the limits of integration are from 0 to infinity right so now we have imaginary part of uh, minus 1 over i alpha and here uh, we have e raised to minus i alpha x and the limits of integration are from 0 to infinity right so now we can further write uh, this expression as c here we have minus 1 over i alpha so i square is equal to uh, minus 1 so minus 1 over i can be written as uh, uh, i square over i so that is i alpha right so here we have uh, i uh, here we'll have simply i so we have i over alpha and here we have 1 over uh, i alpha x and the limits of integration are from 0 to infinity right so now we can write di over d alpha is equal to imaginary part of uh, i over alpha and if we substitute the limits here then see uh, when x tends to infinity here then e raised to infinity tends to infinity so 1 over e raised to infinity tends to 0 right so the first term is 0 then we have minus and when we take x is equal to 0 here uh, we'll get uh, 1 over e raised to 0 that is uh, 1 over 1 that is equal to 1 so here we have 1 right so now we have here imaginary part of uh, minus i over 
alpha right so c uh, if we take the imaginary part of minus i over alpha so this is simply minus 1 over alpha right so now we have obtained here di over d alpha is equal to minus 1 over alpha right so now we have obtained here a differential equation right so di over d alpha is equal to minus 1 over alpha and this is a variable separable differential equation right and this uh, equation can be easily solved by separating the variables so we can write di is equal to minus uh, d alpha over alpha right now we can integrate both sides so we have minus uh, d alpha over alpha plus c where c is the constant of integration right so here we have integral of di is i and here we have log of alpha because integral of uh, dx over x is log of x right and here we have the constant of integration as c right so now we have obtained uh, this equation and now our aim is to find out uh, the value of this constant of integration c right so to find out the value of this constant of integration what we will do uh, we'll use the boundary conditions right so what we will do uh, we'll take uh, here in integral number one uh, we'll take alpha is equal to beta right so if we set alpha is equal to beta in this integral then c uh, we have uh, i is equal to 0 to infinity and here we have cos of alpha x minus because beta is equal to alpha so we have here cos of alpha x uh, divided by x dx and these two terms are same so the numerator is 0 right so the value of integral is 0 right so we have i is equal to 0 when alpha is equal to beta right so here uh, we'll use this condition so when alpha is equal to beta uh, i is equal to 0 right so we'll uh, use this condition in this equation right so i is 0 here and uh, alpha is equal to beta and here we have c right so c is equal to uh, we can take uh, minus log beta to the left hand side so we have log of beta right so the value of the constant of integration is log of beta and now we can substitute it uh, here so we have i is equal to minus log alpha plus log of beta right so this is i is equal to log of beta minus log of alpha right so now from this equation uh, we can write i is equal to log of uh, beta over alpha because uh, we know the properties of log that is log m minus log n is equal to log of m divided by n right so viewers uh, uh, the value of this integral is uh, log of beta over alpha right so this is how by uh, using the concept of differentiating an integral under the integral sign uh, we can uh, prove uh, this integral uh, to be equal to log of beta over alpha right